long ago, there was a girl, not just any girl, a warrior. The warrior knew what had to be done. You can't beat me. You won't face your shadow. Yes, I can. And you can't stop me. Fight! And she let the rain refresh the earth. What's up, my beautiful baby page? Your favorite battery reader on two. We're back another reading. Today, we're going to do a special shout out to my girl, to you. If you're not subscribed to her already, please don't do so. She's an awesome reader and an artist. I fangirl. Give me some Toya motherfucking new ribbons, y'all. If y'all don't know, I have been shouting out this song for I don't know how long. Bring that shit back. Okay, but she did that though. She that was so far. Since it came out, really, since she posted, and I think it's just a snippet. But y'all, I love this fucking song. So, and I love like her artistry. She used to do these little sculptures that she show, like sometimes for a pickle carry. It's like real big, like super fan. So you know, if I stamp that, it's official. Not that she needs to stamp it, but I'm just saying like. I ain't gonna never lead y'all astray, and it's a bullshit reading. The girl is fine, okay? Fine as fuck, okay? You heard the song. Everybody needs that in their life. You really should start your day off listening to it, cause it's affirmations, like, period. So, without further ado, let's get to your reading. Today is Memphis for Monday, yay, yay. I did write down your messages, but I did it a couple of days ago, or however long the fuck ago. And it, I can still read what I wrote. I was just in the middle of doing something. I had to stop and I had to drop down what I was getting the channel message. Um, so, bear with me. So, the, the message that I was getting is, I understand, but I don't condone. Okay, so, who am I talking to? I feel like I'm talking to a group of very empathetic people. People who have specifically a lot of water placements within their chart. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mercury, okay, is what they're saying. You could also be a life path number seven, a life path number eight, and a life path number one or 11, okay? Does not have to be who I'm talking to. I'm talking to the black sheep in the family who have, are coming into understanding as of lately that they're... How do I say that? How do I say this? Ugh. Fuck. It's late down. Can you move it along? I'm on a time cut. That call is so worried for it, but I just had a brain for it. God damn. What's the word? The bird is the word. Um, but, ah. Uh, People misunderstanding you is a blessing. That's what I want to say, misunderstanding you. So, that's why I feel like, I feel like a lot of you guys, people just don't job with you. You just don't need, I feel like you're, people don't like you, they can't even realize, they don't even know why they don't like you. People don't have a reason to not like you. Cause I'm here, what was the reason? You could be a Libra, cause I'm not a credit me fan, but you could be a credit me fan. This not has to be to watch this, obviously, cause peak wig, thick ass, different whiplash, y'all know who I'm for. But I said, let's just say, like, I feel like for a lot of you guys, people dislike you because 
the part of you that is secure and knows who you are, like your sense of security, it fears their insecurities. And that's the people that I'm talking to in this reading. I just feel like that you just noticed a lot of people here, they just don't, like, for one, you're not meant to bring everybody with you. And I feel like you learned some hard lessons with family specifically. Friends, some of you relationships about like how you really just can't, I don't know, you can't, you can leave a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. That's what I heard, okay? And the ancestors had me up like late, late, late at night doing this message, okay? Or early in the morning. Um, what I'm basically gonna be talking about today is who they change to stay once. And I feel like a lot of us, we feel like it's our obligation as healers to heal people who are committed to being sick. And that's something that we're gonna be breaking free from. Um, and what I want you guys to focus on your challenge for the next seven days is to implement boundaries in your life and to not let go of fear of doing so, okay? Um, I don't know. An example of this is there may be some sort of conflict that arises with somebody and they might have every excuse in, excuse in the world as to why they couldn't show up for you the way you needed them to. Or this person here, you might look at them and understand why they are the way they are. Say, for instance, there's somebody that you um, that has beef with you. And you understand this person here, they act the way they do because they're insecure and they're jealous of you. And you also understand this person here was taught those behaviors. You also understand that your cousin here that upbreaks. So you, you know these people well enough. Let's say this person is like a cousin, a bestie, um, a father figure, a mother figure, whatever the case may be. It's like you know these people well enough or you just have the gift of sight to where you can see what the fuck is wrong with these people. I see why you are the way you are. I remember when I was in my shadow. And you want to help these people, but if they're committed to us understanding you, you have to accept that to be fat. You have to believe people when they show you who they are. And you can't take on the proje projections of others. You can't continue to remain casualties of these people on their journey to understand themselves. Some people, they just want to be pillars of salt. You understand what I'm saying? And you just have to let that be what it is. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to go more into depth what I was channeling, but that's just the gist of it. Um, I think that you guys, we're going to be trying to help you identify where or like how can you like identify this behavior, what it could look like, um, and the importance of taking care of this and like not moving forward through life, being green in a motherfucker. That's just the best way I know how to say it, honey. So, I put down that you guys may be very empathetic uh, and you guys may be the type of person who may lack emotional intelligence. Uh, you may have a hard time implementing down boundaries in your day to day life. I don't think that you're a terrible person. I just think that you're someone who will see the red flag and you'll be like, okay, well, I don't know. I feel like some of you guys be like, oh, I remember when I was like that and nobody was there for me. Or it's like an energy surrounding you just grew up around people. Maybe your parents made you compete for their love. Or maybe you grew up around people where you were never good enough for these people. It's like you have a bad case of people placing syndrome. And it's just something that you need to kind of like deal with or work with. And I feel like a lot of you guys have attached your value to other people's ability to see it. And that's what's been having you at these highs and lows, honey. And we need to work on that. If a motherfucker walks into a Tesla store and they don't recognize that's a luxury vehicle, it does not change the fact that's a luxury fucking vehicle, okay? Period, okay? Someone's inability to see your value does not take away from it. And I know I say that a lot, but I have to reiterate these things because it's damn near like y'all be forgetting, okay? Um... I put down nobody likes an asshole, but we've all got one. What I say that's why do why do I say that? It sounds so weird. But take into consideration we all got an asshole, meaning we all have some an ass to tell somebody to kiss. We all can be an asshole, we all can be mean, but no nobody like deal, been dealing with an asshole. Nobody wanna clean nobody else's ass either. Meaning take care of your shit, handle your shit. Twelve, twelve on the clock at the time in which I'm recording this. So very strong message for you guys. You might need to look up that angel number twelve twelve. It might be a message for you when you look it up. But I just feel like there's a lot of energy surrounding. You can't take care of yourself because you're trying to be superwoman for everybody else. And, and, and really what you're thinking about in hindsight is, okay, if I pour into people, they're going to pour into me. It's going to be a symbiotic relationship. Like, you're doing this, and you sign them motherfuckers up for jobs that, and not filling out the applications for them. Mm -mm. <laughs> like, they don't want to. It's like continuously keeping people hired on a staff, and your business is failing. Why is your business business failing? Because you have employees on the clock that you're paying to be around, meaning that you're doing things to compensate these people for wasting your time, essentially. And it may it may be harsh to hear. Um, but that could be the vibe. Let me give you an example of this. Okay, you're working a job, and you have already established the people in your job. They don't respect your time. This could be I have kids, Buki. I don't like. I work to provide for my kids. I don't work to provide for y'all. 
And I know I love y'all with this job. So please just once you can understand your boss to understand. You can understand that the her boss is riding her ass. You can understand that it's all entirety. And also understand that your kids need you. You gotta be at the outside the schoolhouse at 3 45 p.m. And it's just like you have to set that boundary, you know? Yes, I can sit there and I can be conflict avoided and I can be crying on the clock and miserable, making these strawberry shaking espressos, whatever the fuck. <laughs> You know, or I can just, I can do what I have to do. He said, this boundary, this could be with my aunt. Okay, auntie, I understand that you was abused and hurt and you had a fucked up life as a kid. I get that. However, moving forward, you not take on objections and throw them on to me because shit, what, I, I didn't do it. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, you ain't got to be mean and talk shit at every family. We don't have to deal with that. And first of all, I'm hosting Thanksgiving this year, so we not doing it. It's that type of vibe. That's an example of setting a boundary. Okay, in a sense to what I'm talking about, everybody has to ask. So everybody has something they can say is the reason they can be fucked up. I have a million reasons to be a bitch, and I'm sure you do too. But we don't make that as an excuse as to why we go through like fucking over people. In the same way, you can make that choice. Other people have to let people exercise that choice as well, and then you exercise your choices to whether or not you want to be around these motherfuckers. Okay. <sighs> I wrote down. Truth is, oh, because they're attached to somebody that you no longer identify with. So sometimes we have to reintroduce people to who we are, the person that we're becoming. Okay, so maybe they were under, maybe back then you didn't have certain boundaries, so they may have been able to get away with certain things. But today, bitch, I'm not the type of friend where you can just do certain things. You can just call me and tell me about this nigga who's doing all these things to you. And I'll be there and listen because he's bringing me on the roller coaster with you in this relationship, for example. Or, bitch, you can't just come around me, baby daddy, and uh, do whatever. Like that man say from Philly, you didn't do, I know I was wrong. Well, the girl said, I know I was wrong, but you ain't do nothing but come over with a bottle of juice and fuck me. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> but it could be like that. Some of you could be setting the boundary between like a co parenting situation. I'm just getting a lot of information. That was random, but. Whatever the fuck, some of you can be something like that where it's like, okay, I can't get mad at this person for being flirtatious or like I'll step it over my boundaries when I already let this person know, whether it's by words or by actions, that I'm not standing on business. And we have to teach people that we're standing on business. We have to reach people to the person we're becoming. I know the woman that I want to become is self sufficient, she's independent, she's um, she don't take no shit. Okay, so this person isn't going to go with certain things. So, bitch, when I say, I want light ice, I want light ice. Okay, as an example. Bitch, when I say, I don't eat meat. So, when I come to family function, you guys don't have any vegan alternatives. If y'all don't allow me to bring my food, then I'm not coming. It's like a boundary like that. Well, okay, I know I like my kids to be raised like this. I've already told y'all my child is on the spectrum. So, if y'all act like y'all can understand... You know that he needs his sensory toys, or that I need to be able to. If I, the way I gentle parent, you can't understand that. I can just get the fuck away from you, and it's just that. And I can't be mad if these people here they violate things if I don't step up. If I don't tell these people, hey, this is where you cross the line. Okay, this is what we gonna do with this fuck. We not gonna do. If I never have that conversation with people, you don't have to be like how he said it. Cause Key gets his own, honey. I don't mind. Mm -mm bagging somebody the fuck up but you don't have to be like me you can say it in a much more gentle way okay but i'm just only gonna give it to you the way i know how to give it honey this is just how i talk but it's just you know if we can't get mad at somebody if they're just violating these boundaries stepping over us and we're not telling them hey this is what bothers me and then standing on business when they then show us that they don't respect that boundary what the fuck are we collecting red flags for you don't have to give nobody a crash course or a how to treat me for dummies tutorial no <laughs> absolutely not okay i put down sometimes we have to update people with um in our life with the person you identify as now and what that person needs from them in order for the connect connection to remain symbiotic and for all parties involved okay so in this way you might be able to tell this person that, um that you have that some blind spots they might not have within y'all connection one on one now on the clock is as i'm looking okay um, say for instance, you are a friend that just does not like when people call you back to back to back to back blowing you up and you set that boundary. You might not even know your friend probably was doing that shit thinking that's what a friend required. Y'all might have that conversation and it might she might be like, girl, oh, I just do what you think I was for. You know, it might go better. So don't be conflict avoided and don't sit there and live like that's called like emotional monitoring where we're constantly thinking about what people are going to say and how people are going to react before they do so and that's the trauma response that comes from being abused in early adolescence right so i'm going to put the like the definition of emotional monitoring so you guys can understand what that means um 
But a lot of you guys, that can be something that you're doing. Whew, a lot of things coming around there, dropping around in my head. I wrote that oftentimes we have a fear of losing people, but the reality is what it boils down to is what are you willing to tolerate, okay? There is often no benefit in living with a life in third person. So what I mean by living like a third person, meaning if they spent it myself, I'm gonna be a side character in my own story. Um, so that I can help other people be a better main character in their own. So I don't want people to look at my dad as a bad father. So I'm going to sit there and let him narrate my truth and tell everybody and, and, and treat me this way and tell me this is the way that it's going to go. In my experience, I don't like the way my dad talks to me. So I'm going to choose to set a boundary. Dad, if you cannot talk to me in this way, we are not going to communicate. You brought you violated the boundary. This is the, the, the now the reaction to the, the consequence of violating said boundary. Okay, sister, I don't like when you talk to me like this. Those are fighting words. Okay, so if you can't do that in this way, then I'm going to move this way. You know, that, that's the understanding of it. And I wrote down when you're, when you're living in a third party, like a third person type of way, you're not having these conversations. So you're like, okay, my sister talks to me crazy. So I'm just going to let her because I notice how she is and it makes me feel away. And now you're upset and you're hollering at the dog or you, you're breaking down in traffic because you're just overwhelmed with the work week. You're late to work and you're just flustered because you're tired. You're depressed. Now you're in a game weight because you've been eating a lot because this person said something to you and now you're thinking about something that they didn't say for a long time. And now you're at home in the shower cussing, thinking about all the things you could have said or what you wanted to say but you didn't say. And then with your dad's situation, your dad talks to you bad. And this is as an example, right? What makes it that I said? earlier dad talks to you crazy and he keeps doing it and you don't like it instead of standing on business with the boundary you say you sit there you mad and then those things your subconscious interprets them and then you start to think those things are facts because those are people that you surround yourself with now you're insecure now you have poor boundaries in your relationships now your connection with other masculines is suffering because of the representation that you've allowed to be perpetuated in your reality does that make sense i hope i'm making sense let me know in the comment section because i will i'm trying i got some books y'all so i can learn how to talk um <laughs> like some books on communicating so i'm, I'm going Read them and get better at articulating what I'm saying. Cause I feel like a lot of times I just sound like a country motherfucking Vulcan. So I'm talking about cringe when I watch my videos. Cause I be like, what the fuck are you saying, Geek? And I hope that it makes sense cause I say like a lot and I ramble. Let's get back on it. Okay. <laughs> cause I just got this like distracted. But I put down, um, Typically, one might find it difficult to implement boundaries in their relationships with people if they feel like they were in environments where they were treated um, like loving them was a chore consistently or treated like they were too sensitive too persistently, or gaslit too often. This could be in early adolescence surrounding your parents could have been like, why are you crying? I'm going to give you something to cry about. That ain't nothing. I take care of you. I do that. Or you're gaslit or something into not feeling like how you feel, feel or not to articulate your boundaries. Or you're going to talk, oh, you're being disrespectful. Am I being disrespectful or am I calling you out, shorty? Mm. Am I being disrespectful or did I just tell you that you're being abusive? Mm. Okay. Mm. You know, sometimes people, have, it's like, you, have, you can't be afraid. And again, now it's 222 on the clock over there. You can't be afraid to be the villain in some people's stories, okay? Period. You just can't. Like, there's people here who just, they have that mindset and that's okay. Who are you and your story is what matters the most, okay? I wrote down, in short, emotional monitoring is the manifestation of trauma. Sorry to burst your bubble, but being empathetic at the expense of yourself doesn't make you some empathetic being doomed to the fate of habitual tendency to be collateral damage in everyone else's story. We are not meant to be casualties of men in a game called love uh, or life. Okay, so what I mean by that, you're just not meant to go through life and it's like, oh, I'm a healer, so everyone has to use and abuse me. This is my purpose. No, that's not God didn't design you for that, baby. Anything that, that's self-right, that's just something you need to heal within yourself. And you feel like God designed you to be trampled on and mistreated and to suffer in this lifetime. No. Okay? And there's a, a, a very ancient book, a very holy book, where they say God loved man so much that he gave his only begotten son. So why would you spend the life that God sacrificed so that you can live suffering? Okay? Even if you don't believe in Christ, whatever the fuck. 
Bitch, your man me to care of you for however many months and push or get split the fuck open for you to spend your life miserable about somebody who don't even like they self. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Not you miserable behind somebody that's miserable regardless. Whether they whether it was you or anybody that was gonna be beefed up. Whether it was you or anybody that was gonna be mad. Some people have look I know people in my everyday life, like people I grew up with. That literally, when they go out, they seek reasons to be upset about things. They seek things to complain. Even if it's a stranger minding their business in the car. Look at that shit. I ought to be ashamed leaving the house like that. And that's just, and that's just type of stuff. And, and da, 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 da. Oh, so a gay couple. Minding their business. Oh, my children. And oh, the, <laughs> you can't please everybody. Okay? And you name a prophet. And I guarantee you that's a prophet. It doesn't matter what prophet you have. They're not going to be liked by everybody. They're not. It don't take away the power that the guy has given them, right? And it doesn't matter what prophet that you look up. Nowhere, no prophet will tell you that you're supposed to be abused and misused by people. No prophet will tell you that. If they tell you that they're not a prophet, okay? I wrote down, taking back your power is understanding that two things can exist in which. You can empathize with why someone isn't satisfying your needs in life, and you can also simultaneously choose to no longer settle with the disappointment that this connection has brought you. Release yourself from the shackles of this toxic ideology. You deserve a love you don't have to kick, scream, and beg for. Free yourself from everyone's emotions but your own. Resentment kills the magic. Eliminate any guilt that you may have for choosing yourself respect has to be stronger your self-respect has to be stronger than your feelings so sometimes we look at shit and it's like the relationship and we sit there we justify why people keep people there and that's what we have to work on okay because i feel like it's about to run okay but you're my mom no so it's like i have to know no you can understand and i can know Right, and again, it's like don't look at it like you're hurting people or you're being mean or like you're breaking. I know what people like. I was told that I was a disgrace to the family for a decision that I made for myself, you know. And it's like sometimes people will say things to you to get it. Like, if you allow people to narrate your story, you know, you'll never be satisfied. Your happiness will always be in the hands of another motherfucker and the wrong motherfucker at that. So just keep that in mind and just don't sit there and just allow people to gaslight you at the same in situations. They're literally detrimental to your health, okay? Your spiritual well-being, okay? Uh, when I say your self-respect got to be stronger than your feeling, there's going to be times where you, the relationship with somebody, it doesn't suffice. It's, it doesn't matter. You know, you have to look beyond that. It's going to come some times where you have to have boundaries of people that you wanted to make it with. It's going to be some times where you have to cut out people that you wanted to have in the end. You know, the people that you want to break bread with, people you want to celebrate with, your Judas is never a stranger. Okay, the motherfucker that you need to cut a, a thing, a person, it's, not, it's never gonna be something easy. That's the point of it, right? And we can't let people get in a place of like blocking our blessings. And I'm gonna do a reading very soon about that, too. Okay, um, but just be mindful of what you're allowing to step in, in, in between your relationship with God. At the end of the day, if God is showing you that somebody isn't for you, especially in the next seven days. Just take it as that and understand whatever God removes from your life, it shall be replaced with something better. Okay, someone better. Okay? I wrote down that people refuse to adhere to the boundaries that you set or discourage or, 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 or discourage you from your growth. Congratulations. You have identified your Judas. When we never lose, we just sometimes win in different ways than we expected. So I know I say that a lot, but again, I have to repeat myself sometimes y'all be forgetting. It's not a loss if you lose somebody who is offended by your growth. You just didn't know that they was a hater, Bookie. So now we have to now stop looking at them as that friend or that, that picture. That we, have to, we can't look at people with how we want to look at them. We can't paint them one way if they're showing us this, they're this way. I would love to say that I had the best... You know, like for example, I'm not gonna, let's just say you were in a connection with somebody and when y'all first met, they did everything perfect. But as of lately, the motherfucker been making you cry every night, got you questioning your self-esteem. Or if it's a relationship where it's just not, it's, the relationship ain't shipping no more, honey. You cannot look at this new situation y'all are in through the frame or the lens of y'all past situation. Because who they were then, they're not showing up as that now. Now, you have one or two things. And depending on how bad it is, you could up and skedaddle and get the fuck on. And say, hell no, nah, get out of there. 
Or you can tell this person, hey, this is what I need from you in order for this relationship to move forward. And you can allow this person time and space to make that change. And if they show you that they don't respect that value, they don't care about you enough to make that change, then you move forward. Sometimes it's just as simple as like, it's the principle. I would never do you like that. So I can't give you the opportunity to do it again. I can't give you the opportunity just to like work on it because it's the principle. It's going to depend on the situation. For a lot of you, it can be something where it's going to be something small in the next seven days. But it's going to be something where it's the principle of it. It's like when my, I'm going to give you a little short story time. So I don't fuck with certain people in my family. And I'm real big on Key. Everybody know Key will change her number at the drop of a dime. Well, rest in peace. Bye. <laughs> Okay, don't play with me, bitch. Don't ever think you can blow me up, bitch. You will be the the, the tone in which you dial will not be reached. It's a, I'm telling you, going to dial tone so fucking fast, bitch. Don't play with me. I don't like that shit. Don't blow up my phone. Don't act like I got an answer just because you call. Like I hate that shit. Like I wouldn't even have a fucking phone if I didn't need that motherfucker. Literally, like, sometimes I go, phone don't even be on. I don't give no fucks, never did, okay? On my soul. On my soul. For the haters, you know, you know where you could kiss it. Because you don't pay my bills. <laughs> and I'm the baddest bitch. Okay, but I say all this to say, I, everybody knows this about me. If a motherfucker don't have my number, do not get nobody my number. I'm real big on it. Like, it's so, like, ooh. Especially if I tell you I'm fuck with somebody, especially when I'm, I'm, I'm beefing with nobody. And my grandfather, and I told the story before, so yeah. My grandfather, he got upset. Now, this is where it was a boundary that was crossed, and this is an example. And my grandfather used to call me because he had spent some money on us. He felt like then they gave him the obligation uh, or the grounds to then basically monitors us and I don't like that either. I don't like being like a man. I don't like being questioned about what I got going on. I'm real private. Right? But he bought me this fur coat and some clothes. I didn't ask him for any some shoes. I didn't ask him to do none of these things. He just did these things for me. I'm thinking you know these are the cops of your heart but now you feel like you have to know everything I could do moving forward. So you're calling me three times a day every motherfucking day. I don't have a man and a motherfucker I'm fucking Barely can do that. You understand what I'm saying? I'll be damned. Like, I just, I was just taking it back. So I stopped answering. Now, what I should have done, because he was violating the boundary, I should have let him know, hey, motherfucker, I don't like shit like that. Maybe not say it like that because my granddad. And I don't hate my granddad. I do love my papa. But I say, I say, I loved him so much. I was like, oh, he old. He don't know no better. Uh, he he probably don't have no more like people give him like you know he probably bored he probably lonely he probably worried or whatever the case may be I just don't feel like talking so I just decided I was gonna take some days off of myself to just spend time with myself I was gonna call him back it just was I was trying to set that boundary but without communicating though I was being real like um what they call that like passive aggressive and that's where I fucked up right so what he does. He's like, oh, you're not going to answer the phone with me? I'm going to give your number out. He gave my number out to a few people. But one of those people he know for a fact, because that's how we talked about, is how much I don't fuck with this one person. One of these people he gave my number to, and it really blew me. Because I'm sitting in my bed, you know, smoking on the finest gas taste test to offer. Um, and I get a notification and a phone call. And I see a number, and I'm like, I know that ain't, because it's a brand new phone, mind you. Yeah, I'd be so glad when my phone's break sometimes when I have technical difficulties. Because I'd be like, oof, that's an excuse for me not to deal with people. And that's why I'll sit like that for a while, because that's how much I don't like fucking with people. Like Fuck you. That's simple. That easy. Like, I don't. I'm an in-person person, and you can't meet me in person. Now I'm gonna say you don't even be around me. Like I just don't care how close you think we are. I just don't like people texting me DM. That's why I have no DMs on my Instagram. People still violate that. I do not care. Stop this shit. I do not like my phone blowing up. It annoys me. I don't know why. It just does. I just don't like being just. I just don't like it. So when I get this notification, it just instantly blows my heart, and I get real pissed off and mad. Cause I'm like, I know for a fact. For one, I told you I didn't even want to go to this person's house, even if I was just passing through to get something. I didn't want I, I didn't want to be by this person at all. 
So, and you know this about this. You know I'm actively avoiding this person. So, when I think don't go your way, you leave my number to this person so that they can call me. Out of all the people you could have gave my number to, you chose to give it to that person. But you shouldn't have gave it out in the first place. So, this was obviously very upsetting to me. But here's the kicker, though. Who was in the wrong? I would say that both people were in the wrong, but especially me. And I was more mad at myself because I should have knew this shit in the blood the first day he called me three times in a row. Uh, say, man, he don't get down like that. Text me. I prefer text. You know, uh, I really don't, you know, I'm not allowed to be on my phone a lot at work. And when I am on my phone, I'm working and it does interrupt my recording schedule when I'm getting constant notifications. And I really only want people to call me if it's an emergency, but not if it's an emergency, you probably to call the police. Uh, right? It's, not, it's like, I could have said it's something. Something better than what, than nothing, right? But if I never implement that boundary, shit, he thinking probably whatever the fuck. Because I've already let him violate that boundary if I have a loss. This went on for months. So when it goes to the moment where I just randomly stop answering the phone, he probably thinking I'm half dead. Shit, I can understand why he did it. But the same time I don't because it's paying attention and oh, crack my phone. That's a mistake. A mistake is oh, breaking your ankle because you jumped. That's a mistake. What you did. Like, I don't fuck with those people. Why you get my number out? So I can't condone that shit. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can understand, but you can't condone. And it's all about what you will tolerate. So keep that in mind. I love you guys. I'm going to be back in round. So this is me reading. You're